Hello everyone, my name is Ollie. I'm a doctor living and working in England. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before we jump into this one, I just want to let you guys know that I've got just a little bit of time and capacity to put out some more last minute interview prep videos. Lots of you have already sent in some really good suggestions, but I'm just gonna be trying to add to the ones that we've already got. There's a really extensive library on the channel here already of videos to help you with your med school interviews. Some of them, like today's video, I'm going to be reapproaching with my new perspective um, after having finished medical school and started working as a doctor. But I'm slowly working my way through your suggestions and if you've got more med school interview type videos that you'd like to see, just let them know down here. I know that some of you will still have a couple of weeks until your interviews, so if I can be helpful uh, and put out specific content that would be useful, please let me know. But today we're going to be revisiting and reconsidering that age-old question, why medicine? Because the last time I had to properly think about this question myself was more than five years ago, when I was applying for medical school myself. And it's good that we're revisiting it because the landscape has changed considerably, even in that time. And obviously my feelings, thoughts and opinions will have changed. I'm now the other side, again, of another crucial transition point, starting work as a doctor. I'm still at the very beginning of my career, but my position is now very different than the time when I was applying. And so today I thought it might be useful to revisit the question from the perspective of a practicing physician in the NHS and just examining what things have remained important to me and what things have changed. Now, before we continue any further and as kind of a sub preface, I do not believe at a fairly fundamental level that it is possible for someone to have a realistic view of what they are getting themselves in for when they're applying for medical school. I think this is true both at the undergraduate level, so those people that are applying when they're 17, 18 years old, and for people like me who go in when they're a little bit older or perhaps have been doing another career, either in healthcare or not in healthcare, and again, making the decision to pursue medicine after that. Long story short, I don't think it's possible to really understand what you're getting into until you're doing it yourself. And that's a feeling that's been echoed both by people like me that have never worked in healthcare before and by my colleagues that have been doing other things in healthcare and then retrained as doctors. They didn't really understand what was going on any more than I did. And the other key thing to consider at the start is that the course is so long in most settings, at least four or five years, depending on the pathway that you do, that not only will you be a different person, at the beginning and the end. But then once you start working as a doctor and go through that second transition point, the role actually changes you quite quickly as a person as well. But to me now, as a working doctor, when we're trying to tackle this question of why medicine, why is this the thing that I want? There are only really two or three really core ideas that have remained important to me as I've started working that I would have mentioned all of those years ago and that's what I'm going to be talking to you about. Or I suppose only two or three things that are actually fairly unique to medicine as a career as it will apply to the majority of people undertaking a traditional training pathway. But what I'm instead trying to get at is why is medicine different to other things? How is it similar to other things? And what are the kind of really key things that you should be thinking about if you're trying to answer that question, is medicine for me, why medicine? So the first thing to say and the place where I think it's really important to start is that medicine, a career in medicine, is a career in science. Medical education is at its core rooted in the fundamental or the basic sciences, anatomy, physiology, pharmacology. The so-called medical model of education trains physician scientists. And that's fundamentally what we are as doctors. We are scientists that are specifically trained to think and act as clinicians, correlating our understanding of the science if you like, in any given situation, thinking about a patient's physiology, anatomy, pharmacology, then applying that knowledge to the person in front of us, the person that we call the patient, and using that knowledge to interpret and solve problems. And an important element to think about is that as doctors, we are consulted to solve a particular problem that is going on with a particular patient. That is to say that you are trained to have knowledge and experience that is then sought by others in order to fix a problem. Now within the modern NHS, the most similar roles, probably on paper to what doctors do, are roles like physician associates, one of the newest roles, nurse practitioners, 
and extended practice roles. And the fundamental difference between a medical doctor and all of these other advanced practice roles is that doctors are trained from the ground up with an emphasis on the basic sciences, understanding the whole in an education that is both very, very broad in what it covers, but also quite deep. And the reason why this is important is you then learn from first principles and are in theory then equipped to solve any problem that may appear. And it is that very broad and very deep curriculum that will be built upon and built upon and built upon as you become a specialist, remembering that doctors are actually in training for a very, very large portion of their careers, some would even argue their entire career. It's only by taking that very fundamental, very ground up approach that you are able to eventually achieve mastery in the thing that you do. The second really important thing is that you are working with people fundamentally. Medicine is a bad career choice if you do not enjoy working with other people. And it's perfectly okay to not enjoy working with other people. It's not for everyone. That is okay. But in medicine, regardless essentially of what you choose to do, there will be an element of communication and that communication is one of the key skills that you will develop. We must all work with our patients to explain the details of the conditions that we're treating for, why we are doing the various management steps and investigations that we are doing, and not just the why, but how these things are going to impact upon them. Someone like a urologist or a urological surgeon needs to not only understand, obviously, the intricacy and detail of the anatomy and physiology on which they are operating in a given patient, but they also need to be able to explain all of that to a patient in the way that the patient can understand, as well as the long-term effects. Are they going to have pain? Are they going to have neurological problems? Are they going to have sexual dysfunction? All of these are communication challenges that don't really have anything to do with the ability to operate, but they still form a key part of that doctor's role. And even if you are not in a necessarily patient-facing specialty, perhaps something like pathology or radiology, who traditionally interact with patients much less, you still have to interact with your colleagues, whether they be other doctors requesting your opinion on particular scans and tests, or other healthcare colleagues that do not speak the same language of medicine as you do. But the really important thing is not just your academic and practical ability to practice medicine, but within that practice comes the key communication element. And I, I really don't think you can have one without the other if we're talking about the role of a doctor and what a doctor actually does. Now, before we move on, the obvious reaction to that is that all healthcare roles deal with this challenge in one way or another, and they do. So really, it's a combination of the first two points, that fundamental grounds up scientific approach to learning and treating disease and the communication challenges and exercises that come with that and the responsibility of doing it well. Now, for the third talking point of this video, I want to break away a little bit and talk about other options. And this is something that I've become more acutely aware of as a doctor currently applying for jobs myself. Because of the very extensive training and competition that doctors undergo as part of their learning and the profession having the reputation that it does, you actually have an extremely large number of options within medicine. You can just as easily train as a specialist in a particular area of disease, your traditional specialties, cardiology, neurology, respiratory surgery, whatever takes your interest. If that's not what you want to do, you can become an academic researcher doing lab science or other research in an area that interests you, or you can become an educator lecturing and training the next generation of doctors, or you can leave medicine altogether and go and work in the private sector as a consultant for say a pharmaceutical company working on new drugs, or go and work in medical devices, for example companies that make pacemakers or artificial joint replacements. What I'm really trying to get at here is being a doctor full stop, comes with a lot of professional weight and clout behind it. And you can leverage that to make your life look like whatever you want. You can even have combinations of all of these things that I've talked about thus far. Do not underestimate the value of that, especially when we're thinking that these qualifications form the basis potentially of the rest of your life. That's a very long time and you've got to keep it enjoyable and interesting. Bringing things back to the more professional model, medicine is essentially a very long apprenticeship because really what you are learning is a craft as much as anything, just as a tradesperson would. It's about slowly getting better 
and better and better and better at the craft, the art of medicine. And it's well known that even once you've finished all of your formal training and become a GP or a consultant or a specialist doctor, that that training and learning never really stops. And in my first ever job as a doctor, I remember my educational supervisor, a consultant surgeon, saying that when he started working as a consultant independently and as someone very experienced and competent, he realized how little he actually knew. And it's then taken years and years and years further for him to become more and more comfortable with what he does. And he's still got a very long way to go. And you can't afford to be set in your ways either. Medicine is extremely dynamic always changing new treatments, new medicines, new guidelines are constantly coming in and out. And ultimately, if what you want is to come to work, do your job, go home and not have to think about much outside of that, which is again, a perfectly respectable and ordinary thing to want. The value of that is very clear for a lot of people, then medicine, that is the role of a doctor, probably isn't the best thing to choose because you've constantly got to keep up to date with new development and enhance your practice. And the last thing that I want to talk about is leadership, because this is, again, one of the things that is fairly unique to the doctor role within the healthcare team. We know that physician-led care is the gold standard model for healthcare, and that comes back to the very extensive and longitudinal training pathway that doctors and only doctors go through. And this means really that in any given complicated situation, a doctor is going to be the one that is looked to to take charge and solve the problems. And let me tell you that even as a very junior doctor, that responsibility appears quickly when things get dangerous and complicated. You will be looked to as the primary decision maker. At least in the NHS, there is no role besides the consultant doctor, the GP, or the fairly new specialist role that takes ownership and ultimate responsibility for patients in the same way that medical doctors do. There isn't another one that has that same burden of responsibility. And I do think that practically it would be very difficult to get that same sense of ownership and ultimate responsibility doing pretty much anything else in healthcare, assuming of course that that is the thing that you want. And that really for me is what it comes down to. That's why medicine for me, that's why I am continuing to be a doctor in spite of everything else. But that's who I want to be. I want to be a physician scientist undergoing extremely long and difficult, arduous training for the benefit of my patients and bear the ultimate responsibility for looking after them. And that's what I want. That's why medicine. So thank you very much, guys. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out my website, ollieburton.com, where you can find written transcripts of all of these videos. Take care, and I'll see you next time.